This bay is extremely productive, one of the most productive bays in the country because of this river. Uh, it's uh, filled with all sorts of stuff that these organisms need to feed on. That's why it is the major nursery for shrimp, blue crabs, and fishes in the whole area. Dr. Livingston calls Apalachicola Bay, acre for acre, the most productive agricultural region on the earth. Home is home, you know? I mean, it's, it's hard to explain. It's like anywhere, you know, like you sleep better at home, you feel better at home. You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of variables that go into it, you know, when you grow up somewhere. But I think it's a pretty special place. You know, it's, let's say it's one of the most diverse estuaries in the um, state of Florida. Um, there's not many places you can catch a bass and a saltwater species in the same place. I mean, even when we're not guiding, we're normally somewhat our day revolves around the water, you know or the woods in my case sometimes. I like to spend a little time in the woods, but it's always, I mean, without the water, we are not here, you know? Like, that, that, that's your identity, that's your brand, that's, that's everything that makes you. Apalachicola, Brad Martina, thanks for having us, man. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to fishing this area. I've never fished here, it's so. It's a pretty interesting area. I mean, just the scenery is outstanding. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's very diverse as far as the, the estuary and the, mm -hmm. the places we fish, um, things like that. So what are you what are you thinking about today? I'm gonna try to get on the beach and uh, maybe do a little pompano and uh, Maybe try to find a few jacks also, and if that doesn't work out, then we'll try to slip in and try to catch a few reds. That sounds like a plan, that sounds like fun. It's gonna right, be a good time. Let's go do it. My first time fishing Big Brett, and um, Brett Martina is synonymous with Apalachicola. When you ask anyone in this industry about Apalachicola Bay, they'll tell you Brett Martina. Go talk to Brett. You know, his reputation precedes him. He is a card of cards, and um, there's only one Brett. Um, and I was so happy to get to, to fish with him and talk to him about Apalachicola and, and help him spread awareness of what's going on in his bay. Brett insisted that uh, his buddy Nate, Uncle Nate as he refers to him, got to fish with us and um, I'm glad he did. I mean, I, Nate had been fishing uh, Apalachicola Bay for a really long time and was able to add some perspective that we, we wouldn't necessarily or ordinarily have. First of all, what's the tide doing? That's what I want to know. I ain't even looked at it. We probably need to look at that. <laughs> Take them like this. You see his head, like you see his eyes? Yeah. They crawl backwards. Okay. Having this head, you want to stick him right about there okay. every time. Gotcha. I, I helped you out, Uncle Oh, mate. Lord. There he is. Uh oh, now I'm fired up. That's it. <laughs> Troll him out of God. Holy cow. That'd have been funny on camera. You want to throw him in the live well? Oh, yeah. Pompano is a very underrated species. Uh, they're available all over the state, but not many people actually get to specialize in them or get to fish them. And uh, But they're sought after for a lot of reasons. One is they're school up, they are very visual. They're fast, hard fighters, but they taste great. And that's all Brett and Uncle Nate could talk about was eating fresh pompano. Better not let me just do y'all like this to the back of the boat now. <laughs> that's a good one too, Nate. That was good. Whoop, come on back in here, baby. Let me grab that thing. I'm gonna get a good close up of that thing. Throw them in there? Yes, sir. What was once a booming oyster industry, a literally booming oyster industry, an industry that funded the entire economy of Apalachicola Bay is completely decimated. What was once occupied by several big commercial fleets now is down to zero. And the problem is lack of fresh water, a very familiar story in this state. 
Without that freshwater flow down the Apalachicola River, that natural balance in the bay is missing. A river should never flow north. I've seen that river flow north. Like your river, like it should almost go still, but it should never have a two knot current or two mile an hour current, whatever it is, going north. And when you start having that, that's just, that's calling for saltwater intrusion. You know, I mean, I think the river will come to a standstill. You know, when we come a tide, big giant incoming water, you know, with a southeast wind or something like that, but it should never flow north like it's flown. Without that balance, everything suffers. Oysters suffer, red fishing suffers, trout suffers, and you name it. Because of that, the entire industry that revolved around those oysters is decimated. Ah, oh, well, I mean, you have to look at it as the population increases, you know, as far as Metro Atlanta and, you know, even in South Georgia and here, everywhere, just the whole country is population's boomed, mm -hmm. you know? And so there, there's... There... The demand for water is more than so what it was. upstream, there's more water being taken out of the river. Of course, yes. This segment is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. It was like a scene out of some comedy routine. Brett and Uncle Nate were fighting over the front bow of the boat to try to catch the most and the biggest pompano. Um, like we were kids, and up the shoreline comes this wad of redfish. I'm gonna power pull us down in a minute. Oh boy, get ready. They're all over it. They're all, there you go. Got them. They don't stop fishing up here. You know, all we have are redfish and trout year round. That's it, that's the only two species. I mean, that's, that's all I got. I have no other species. Like, when those are gone, I'm gone. Yeah. And same thing with the tarpon. Thank God they, they are highly protected by the state of Florida, in which they probably should be protected even more, you know? Because that's a very special, that is a money maker for the state of Florida. And I don't know if they realize that yet, but I think they do. There we go. God, just broke me off. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna get another one. Hold on. Okay. The school kept coming, coming, coming. We caught a couple. There was a couple of big fish in there, and Benny saw one of it. Stroked the plug in there. Like it was a long cast. Worked it, worked it, worked, and the big fish just tore out of the school and come up and crushed the top water plug. Look at him. Oh, got him. You got him. <laughs> that dude couldn't resist it. No. He had to have it. He jumped all over that dude. Yes, he did. Double. Let's get a double. Got him. Like the plague, that's a good one there. You got a flea on there? Yep. <sighs> Let's sink in. One of them will fire up on it. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to go up under you. You got your fish? Yep. Yeah, let's just throw him in there. <laughs> What's up, buddy, man? <laughs> Ain't bad right there. That was pretty badass. I'm really appreciative of the day with Uncle Nate and Brett, uh, getting to fish water that I ordinarily would never fish. Redfish and pompano on white beaches and blue water, that's pretty special, and, and it was a great day. We took our pompano, our prized catches, back to Brett's house, and he showed us how to flay them correctly, and so we had a cooler full of fresh pompano. And we were very excited to go meet with some locals, share our pompano with them, and talk about the health of the bay and what the possible solutions are. Yeah. 
In every fishery, we, we set aside time to meet with the locals. In some cases, it's, it's a bunch of guides who are angry about what's going on. In other cases, it's the community coming together to talk about what's going on. In this case, it was about people who were truly affected by the lack of oyster fishery in this bay. In the 80s and 90s, especially in the, it was in the 70s and 80s, but I, I worked a lot in the 80s, we used to go out there and catch 70, 80 bushels. We would harvest, you're talking about five, 600 commercial vessels out there catching 60, 70 bushels a day. Then, in 2009, 2010 year, we, it, we, we just got, got shut off, you know, like they turned the valve off and things just totally went south. You could tell in their voices and in their eyes that it's something that's near and dear to their heart. I had a, my first vessel at 16 years old. And, and in the summertime, I worked my own vessel. I made good money. And uh, I went to college for, for one year and uh, went back to the bay. You know, How I, long has Oystering been in your family? I'm fourth generation. My son would have been fifth, but he's a welder. Thank goodness. It's rare these days to find a city that welcomes you. Um, and we rolled in Apalachicola not knowing what to expect. I, and I'd never been there. And um, every single person we met, uh, from the gas station to the restaurants, were welcoming. They were happy to see us. and uh, Not necessarily because of what we were doing, just, just happy to see us and hoping we had a good day. And just nice to be around great people. The freshwater flow is the driver of productivity in the bay, and we know that this bay has historically been one of the most productive bays in the Northern Hemisphere. The lawsuits between Georgia and Florida and Alabama over the past 30 years have, have affected the community. They know there's a solution, that it's right there within grasp, and that if we can just find a balance uh, with the communities above us, that we could actually restore this bay. I mean, everybody points the finger when something goes wrong. The problem is if everybody comes together and just says, hey, let's try to fix this, instead of pointing the finger, you get more done. And I think if you look at the water wars down in South Florida, down in Mosquito Lagoon, you know, they all, it's just everybody points the finger. Instead of saying, hey, let's come to common ground and let's try to fix this. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. We wanted to get down the coast just a little bit to fish with my buddy Kyle Pitts, who has been fishing there for a long time. And, you know, his connection to the water was very evident. And like every other fishery, he and the guides that, that survive in those areas absolutely revolve their lives and their businesses revolve around the health of that water. Man, I'm gonna try to do as much as possible, man. I kind of want to be able to show you, you know, every little piece of uh, this fishery. I mean, we might be out there in, you know, 70, 80 foot of water, then run back and, you know, pull in, you know, eight inches of water. You know, it looks like a beautiful day, man, great weather. So that thing sure gives us a lot of options, you know? So we're running offshore um, seven, eight miles, and we come to this spot and Kyle says, this is it. And as soon as we come off plane, you can see life everywhere. <laughs> Damn, I hope you brought a bunch of those spros. <laughs> Cal said to bring the big sticks. And so I brought the biggest sticks I got. And um, he pulls out of his box a jig that looked like a football. And he says, you know, just drop it down to the bottom and start bouncing it up. Let's see what we get. Well, it didn't take long before we hooked our first Volkswagen bus, it felt like. And uh, these, these Amber Jacks were absolutely killing us. There we go. There you go. There you go. Hey, buddy. I'll grab him. Sure. Hold him, Benny. Oh, I feel it. 
going. After we had our fill of big AJs absolutely working us over, we decided to go hit another wreck. I think maybe our first drop, I don't even know if I had my line in the water and Kyle was hooked up with his first red snapper. See you. Oh, a lot of head shaking. He does not like being away from that reef. Yeah, try me now. Try me now. That's a good fish. <laughs> I can feel it bumping the reef. Oh, that's a, a big uh, black snapper. Nice, another species. Oh, buddy. Talk to me, Kyle. Look at that. Dude, this is Woo! like, this is like literally a fish, man. Like people come from all over to catch. They are, people like are obsessed with a, with a, a red snapper. I mean, they'll come down from all the states above us to come out here and catch these things. Good job, man. Heck Excellent work. Yeah, man. Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Apalachicola Bay is suffering from decreased freshwater flow from inland rivers. Let's join Apalachicola Riverkeeper George Ackerman on the status of this vital estuary. George, as Apalachicola Riverkeeper, what's the region of your responsibility? Is it strictly the bay and the river, or do you take in more of the northwest coastline as well? As Apalachicola Riverkeeper, we're charged with monitoring the Apalachicola River and bay. We're concerned with the region. We do pay attention to what's going on in the entire Gulf, and we also stay in close contact with other river and water keepers across the state to work on collaborative policy issues and advocacy work. You know, when folks here at Appalachia Bay, they think oysters. This is a super biodiverse hotspot. What's the number one threat to this estuary? Declining freshwater flows into the bay have significantly hurt the Apalachicola Bay, and the oysters are indicator species, so that's how we knew things were not going well when we started losing oysters. The state of Florida is suing the state of Georgia and trying to remedy that situation. That Supreme Court case is still in play right now. Hopefully we'll get a really positive ruling within the next six months to a year, and we will see that freshwater flows can be restored to this really important connected river system. Do declining oyster populations in the bay pose a threat for other fisheries. Oysters are an indicator species or a, a keystone species. If you've got a healthy oyster population and your natural oyster bars are doing well, odds are that your bay, your estuary is doing really well. It's a significant part of the habitat and tells us a lot about what's going on. So yes, if you've got problems with your oyster populations, odds are this very connected system, you should be looking for what other problems there may be. This segment is brought to you by Gulp Saltwater outfishes all other bait. When we first rolled into town, um, very familiar scenes from, from a South Florida native of uh, hurricane damage from the year prior and Hurricane Michael coming through. And um, there were still many homes that were destroyed roads that were destroyed and shorelines and trees down and it's a sad sight to see but it's also a natural thing and um, like mother nature rebuilds so will the community i mean clean water is everything to our business i mean i mean as a fishing guide i mean you you, I mean, you, you have to have clean water i mean number one to fish and number two you know to have people come down here to want to fish i mean you know we're, we're in a you know a time where news travels fast so you know, I mean, one little word of red tide gets out, man, and it just explodes, you know? And I mean, it not only affects us, I mean, you know, the, the, the tourism industry workers, you know, um, from anywhere from, you know, the front desk clerk at the, at the condos to, you know, to, you know, the, the guys at the tackle store that sell the shrimp and the bait, you know? I mean, everybody is affected by it. I mean, we are a coastal, you know, fishing tourism community. Got him, got him. Yeah. Got him. 
That was easy. He made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> This jug is gold, we gotta get our hands on it. <laughs> that, keeps... that was a bad life choice, buddy. Yes, sir. That's what a redfish looks like. <laughs> they exist. Man, I was so great. So appreciative of fishing with Kyle today. Another fishery I would have ordinarily never experienced. And what a dynamic fishery. We, we went offshore and fished for deep species. And within a couple minutes, we were inshore fishing water that I'm used to fishing. And um, all within a couple of hours, it's just, it's just amazing to have this fishery. And uh, all the more reason why it's important to protect the oysters and the grass and all the infrastructure that supports the forage fish so that these fisheries can survive and thrive and the community around those fisheries can thrive as well. All right, Kyle, thanks so much for pulling me on this fish, bud. Yeah, we I had to work it. a little bit for this dude. Yeah, we did, But uh, it was worth the wait. We caught a nice snapper and stuff offshore, bonita. Yeah, man. And we come ashore, we come pulling for a minute, and look at that. A little bit of both, both worlds, you know, shallow, deep. Beautiful redfish. All right, all right, buddy, you've given us enough. Thanks so much. See you. Gone. Good job, man. Thank My you man. so much. Thank you, dude. Awesome. <laughs>